So this is problem 19 from the spring 2015 AMATIC Student Math Leagues contest. Uh, it says a quadrilateral has consecutive sides of length 10, 4, and 6 in that order. And one diagonal divides the quadrilateral into two isosceles triangles. If A1 and A2 are the smallest and next smallest areas of quadrilaterals, which satisfy these conditions, in which interval does A2 minus A1 lie? So essentially what's going to end up happening here is we're going to have to find A2, find A1, take their subtraction, and they couldn't just sort of give us options for A1 and A2, they should just give us a range of where their difference lies. So um, let's just start attacking this. So we have a quadrilateral with consecutive sides of length 10, 4, and 6. So what this is going to look like, I'm just going to draw three sides and then we sort of have this unknown fourth side. But I go 10, 4, 6. And then what we know is that one diagonal divides the quadra quadrilateral into two isosceles triangles. So we can do a diagonal in a couple of ways here. One is, is you can do a diagonal like this. So let me draw that in blue. Let's so maybe do one in red here. We do the same 10, 4, 6. Ugly 10 there. And then we drew, draw sort of the other diagonal. Okay, so let's think about what can happen. Is this diagonal, if this diagonal splits our quadrilateral into two isosceles triangles, that means this lower right triangle, um, two of the three sides have to match, which means the diagonal is either four or six. Here. Okay, so we're gonna just kind of write down the possibilities. So one option, let's just go through this diagonal. We have a four, a six, a 10. And then we put a, let's suppose we put a four on that diagonal. Well, then this top side to make sort of this upper left triangle be isosceles, this top side has to be either four or 10. But if that was four, we'd have a four, a four, and a 10 in a triangle. But the 10 is actually longer than the sum of the other two sides, which is impossible. So we put a four there. We have to put a 10 there to make this isosceles because a four is not long enough for sort of this side and this side to stretch between the two endpoints here. So that's one possible quadrilateral. Now, another option, we've got our 10, our 4, or 6, our diagonal. Oh, that's kind of ugly. Let's start over here. And we draw our quadrilateral. We have a 10, a 4, a 6. And then this diagonal, this could be a 6. Now, when that's a 6, you can get a 10 up here to make this upper left triangle 10, 10, 6. Or, we can do a six, four, six, ten. You could actually put a six here because now six plus six is twelve is bigger than ten. Here you couldn't do the four plus four because that's eight. That'd give you something less than ten. Okay, so you get those three options. With our other sort of diagonal, ten, four, six, again kind of an ugly ten. Here we draw our diagonal. Now this with our lower left triangle, we have a ten, a four. To be isosceles, this diagonal has to be either 4 or 10. But if it was 4, we get 4, 4, 10. That's not, well, it can't be a triangle because 4 plus 4 is 8 is less than 10. So we know this diagonal has to be a 10. And then the question is, what's this top side? Well, for the upper right triangle to be isosceles, we either have to get a 6 or a 10. So we could put a 6 there. We get 10, 4, 10, 6, 10. 10. Okay, so those are really, we only really get five possibilities. So you get these two and those three. Let's just label these. Um, how about call this one A, this one B, this one C, this option D, this option E. Let me just need to find the area of these quadrilaterals here. So essentially the strategy to do that is you have two triangles. So just find the area of one triangle plus the area of the other triangle. Each triangle we know all the sides. So now there's a formula, maybe it's not quite well known. Here, I'll just keep that there. Let's go down, there's a formula I'm gonna use, and this is called Heron's formula. Whoops, Heron's formula. This is an old geometry formula. And what we get here is that if we have a triangle, let's not draw, that looks like a right triangle, it doesn't have to be a right triangle. Here we have side length, let's say A, B, C. And then the area equals, what's it end up being? Well, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. 
Um, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to say this is the square root of, um, let's put it this way, it's a, well, let's do it this way. Let's let p perimeter be a plus b plus c. Let's say this is the square root of p times p minus 2a times p minus 2b times p minus 2c. And then to divide this by 16, that's like dividing each of these by 2. You sometimes will see this formula written maybe where s is a semi-perimeter, a plus b plus c over 2. And then you'd see this formula maybe in a little bit nicer form here. Let's see, this is going to be s times, not p, times s minus a times s minus b times s minus c. Maybe that looks a little bit nicer here. I don't somehow like using s. I like p. It doesn't really matter which way you go. Actually, let's use a formula with s. So we'll do that. Now, the triangles that we have here, they're all tens, fours, and sixes. So let's just look at this. Here we have a 10, 10, 4. So let's just think about our triangle. So one triangle sides 10, 10, 4. What Heron's formula says is the area, uh, let's first of all find S. That's going to be 10 plus 10 plus 4 over 2. That's 24 over 2. That's 12. And so the area, area happens to be square root of 12 times 12 minus 10, that's 2, times 12 minus another 10, that's 2, times 12 minus 4, that's 8. And let's see here. So we get a 2 and a 2. That brings a 2 to the outside, if I can get rid of those. 8 Let's say I can factor a 4 out of 12 and 8. So this would be 12 would be 4 times 3. 8 would be 4 times 2. I have the two 4s, so I get a times 4. And I'm left with 4 times 3, that's 6. So this first triangle has area 8 square root of 6. Pick up another triangle. How about this one is 4, 4, 6. So 4, 4, 6. That has S equal to 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 6. 4 plus 4 plus 6 over 2, 8 plus 6, 14 over 2, that's 7. And so the area is square root of 7 times 7 minus 4 is 3, times 7 minus 4 is 3, times 7 minus 6 is 1. It's going to give me a 3 square root of 7. 4, 4, 6. Here we have a 10, 10, 6. Do a 10, 10, 6. My semi perimeter 10 plus 10 plus 6 over 2. 26 over 2, that's 13. Gives me an area of 13 times 13 minus 10 is 3. Times 13 minus 10 is 3. Times 13 minus 6 is 7. And so that's going to give me an area of, let's see, 3 times square root of 7 times 13 is 7, 91. So, so 3 times square root of 91 there. Um, let's see. Yep, something there is bothering me, but I think it's just, I think it's okay. So we have 10, 10, 6. We have a 6, 6, 4. Eventually these triangles are going to start repeating themselves is why I'm bothering to make a bit of a chart. Here our semi-perimeter is 6 plus 6 plus 4 over 2. 12, 4, 16 over 2, that's 8. So the area should be square root of 8. 8 minus 6 is 2. 8 minus 6 is 2. 8 minus 4 is 4. So let's see, we get 2 times 4 times 4 would give me a 4, and then I'll have a square root of 2. That one's an 8 square root of 2. Now let's see, 10, 6, 6. I haven't done that one yet. So there are semi perimeter is 10 plus 6 plus 6 over 2. So that's 22 over 2, that's 11. So our area is going to be 11 times 11 minus 10 is 1. 11 minus 6 is 5. 11 minus 6 is 5. So I'll get 5 times square root of 11. And let's see, this 6, 6, 4. We already did a 6, 6, 4 over here. 10, 6, 6. We already did 10, 6, 6 up there. 10, 10, 4. We already did 10, 10, 4 up there. 10, 10, 6. 
already did 10, 10, 6 there, 10, 10, 4, already did 10, 10, 4 there. Okay, so we get the areas of really, we have five different types of triangles. And so the areas of our quadrilaterals, let me just go back to blue here. First one is a 10, 10, 4 and a 4, 4, 6. So let's maybe, let's add another page. So A has area, this was a 10, 10, 4 and a 4, 4, 6. So it's a eight square roots of six plus three square roots of seven. B, the area here is 10, 10, 6, 6, 6, 4. 10, 10, 6 is three square roots of 91. 6, 6, 4 is eight square roots of two. So get three square root of 91 plus eight square root of two. C, is 10, 6, 6, and 6, 6, 4. We get 10, 6, 6, 6, 6, 4. 2 squared is 11 plus, or sorry, 5 squared is 11 plus 8 squared is 2. D here is a 10, 10, 4, and a 10, 6, 6. So we get 8 squared is 2 and 5 squared is 11. No, sorry. I think I said that wrong. 10, 10, 4, 10, 6, 6. 8 square roots of 6, 5 square roots of 11. We get, how about write it as 5 square root of 11 plus 8 square root of 6. And finally, E here is 10, 10, 4, 10, 10, 6. So that's our 8 square roots of 6 and 3 square roots of 91. So we have 8 square roots of 6 plus 3 square roots of 91 here. And so what we get, we could approximate all of these. Here, so let's calculator, drop that over there. So let's do eight square roots of six plus three times square root of seven. It gives us about 27.53. Uh, let's see, next one, we get three square root of 91 plus eight square root of 2, so it's about 39.93. Next one, 5 square roots of 11 plus 8 square roots of 2, so it's about 27.8, well, 90, oh, I guess, if we round that. Next one is going to be 5 square roots of 11. plus eight square root of six, eight times square root of six, gives us 36.18. Last one is eight square roots of six, eight times square root of six, plus three times second square root of 91, spits out a 48.21. Okay, now going back up, just to remind ourselves of what the problem asked for, we wanted to find a1, A2 are the smallest and next smallest areas of the quadrilaterals. What interval does A2 minus A1 lie? So our smallest is 27.53. Um, and the next smallest is 27.9. I actually forgot which one is A1 and which one is A2. I want to take the big minus the small in any case. So when we take the difference there, our difference is going to be somewhere well, let's just write it this way. The difference between those is going to be between 0 and 1. So it's going to be like 0 0.37. You know, we could round that maybe a little bit. But it's somewhere between 0 and 1, which means our answer is actually A.